week's lesson is about live reports. What does live reports mean? If you go to the uh, admin section or at least the, the main menu, we have reports. There's a whole bunch of reports in different categories and those reports are basically uh, canned reports. You can change a couple of settings, but you can't change the layout. Those are the reports that come by default with Autodesk. There's also a code that's called live reports, and this is where you can design these particular reports in a much more uh, fashionable way. It's different reports than over here, and that's what I want to show you. We're going to go to the live reports designer to show you how you can create and manage those kind of reports. You see it brings up a new page. It's a kind of a, a designer page. And by default, there's a whole bunch of system reports already in here. Let's go open up one, uh, proof and post, the first one, and I'll say on this little hamburger menu, and here we can say, we can do a couple of items. Now, as you can see, the edit button, which I was looking for, is not here. Because the systems reports, by default, you can't edit them. So what I will do is that I will quickly run a copy of this report. That's the first thing. We probably have to create a new folder. So let's first close this one because there is no other folder. So I'm going to create here a new folder. It's over here, this button. And I'll say uh, new reports. You can create those folders maybe by uh, creating them by, uh, by your uh, departments that you have. There's different ways of doing it. Now that I have that folder, now I can create a copy because I can't create a copy in the system reports. I need to create it into the new reports. Invoice totals by company name, that's the report name, and I'll just call it a copy. And then we can press OK. And now we will create a copy of the report. Now, once this copy has been created, then we can also edit it. Here, right now, we have it in this folder. I click on the little hamburger menu. And now we have the option to edit. That brings us an editor page. Editor page, that's where you can see kind of the layout. It looks like a little bit like Excel, works a little bit like Excel. And this is a good example where you can also see what kind of, uh, uh, yeah, by the kind of uh, formulas are being used. There's a whole bunch of uh, options that you have here on the top. In this particular lesson, we're not going to explain you uh, a lot on how to exactly create these ones from, from scratch. Uh, but I'm just going to quickly show you all the advanced uh, features that are in there. So here, what you can see from the layout, there's a page header. There's a header per company invoice. There's a detail level. And there's the footer. And there's a report footer. And there's a page footer. So the page footer has the page number. And as you can see, it's a dynamic one. So always a good one is like if you want to create a new report and you want to have the page footer, go a little bit to these uh, standard reports that the Autodesk has, make a copy. And then right here, you can just collect these kind of edits. You basically click on it, and then you have the ability to edit it. And that way, you can copy that and, and take it. Here, for example, you can change a invoice total by account. And you can change here whatever. You can change the verbiage, because that's just a text uh, field. Now is a function also of today's date. So when you run the report, you can always see the date. This on the header, you see it's dates. And there's an invoice number, invoice ID that's just text. If you right click on it, you have the regular options like cut, copy, and paste. But you also have the ability to format cells. And we're doing the format cells. There's also the option to do a little bit on the category. You can change the borders, make them uniform, a line, and, and a color. And you can even do some conditional formatting. Now, this is, works a little bit difficult within uh, Autodesk, but they, uh, they do have the option here. So if you want to play with conditional formatting, if you know how it works in Excel, this kind of plays out the same. Then you have the header, which is a kind of a complicated formula. As you can see, it's the account name, and it lists the invoice company name. And then on the detail, it will list the invoice number, the ID, and the date. And then you have the footer, a uh, specific one, where it basically gives you an average sum of that currency in a billable amount. What else you have here? You have on top, like the default up. If you know how Excel works, then you have a lot of known uh, factors here too. If you make some changes, of course, press on the Save Report button over here. Uh, there's bold, there's italic, underline, you can change the font color and the size. These ones play for, for itself too, the, the outlining. Uh, here is an, an option to basically to create a, uh, an auto sum. Uh, you see the way you can also import a graph. And this is the, uh, basically the extended one, the formula editor. And that one will give you an, a bigger example of all the, the options that you have in here. As you can see here, this is where it generates the formula. But here you can see from which section you want to pull down the, the data. Uh, 
uh, what kind of options you have available and what kind of formula do you want to apply on it as you see the regular plus and minus but a bunch of logical ones dates and everything so very very much uh, a lot of options that you have in here to make uh, formulas there's ability to uh, to link a report there's ability to put a uh, chart wizard in there or a gate so you can really make them uh, really nice standing out and then there's the ability to export them and that's what i wanted to do over here on the settings because here we can indeed rename uh, this particular report we can change the description we can choose the categories and that's what i'll start first with because right now this one has by default the category of invoice and invoice company within the approve and post and as you can see the rest is all grayed out now if i would remove these two i would create a new invoice or a new one from scratch now i don't have any categories and as you can see now everything is available to be selected everything is, is bold and now i can select my report and now i need to select what categories i have if you select a category let's just call it let's we say like the code item we can double click it or we say add now it goes to the right hand side and then you say immediately all the other ones are uh, grayed out we only have the options to do the quote and code item product to add here as well so we really have to make sure what kind of categories we are within the autodesk help section there's a huge additional section where they explain what kind of items that you're looking for are available in which particular uh, category once you create it and the reason why you have not all the categories open is otherwise Autodesk would need to search through the entire database and now you basically you pull which categories you want to pull from here and the system knows okay i only have to look into the database section of those particular items and i don't have to go to the entire database if you really want to run a report on all the particular items then you would need to go to a more advanced reporting system but for the default system uh, i think this is a pretty well built engine where you can build a whole bunch of items so that's about your category names in this case i'm going to press cancel otherwise this report wouldn't want to work and here you have those two categories and if you go into the selection of the second category then you get all the database fields that are available as you can see lots of available database fields and here on the bottom i also want to make sure that you know the udf that's for the user defined fields even those ones you can also pull in into your reports and make specific items on there so let's say this report you want to make sure that it's only where uh, your udf migration status has a particular value then you can put that in here then you can make that report here and that's basically what you do over here uh, by for example with filters filters is an option where you select which uh, items you want to have included yes or no here it's already selected by invoice date uh, of the month may or it's basically the, you can do it even with a filter that's a default setting let's say you can always say it, modify it of the friday of the current week there's a couple of generic ones so every time that you save this report you run it it takes that particular setting of the last week or the last month and it's also here a check mark prompt for value so when you want to run this report it always asks you like okay what data range you want to have but it comes already with a predefined section in this case the previous month voided invoices you don't want to have that in there so that's why it says equal again on this pull down menu you have a whole bunch of uh, operators again that you can make your selections for example what i said invoice company there was that migration status so let's say uh, i would like to have that one added select it you move it over here and as you can see now the filters over here and now you can say okay what kind of equal to let's see and there's indeed a couple of settings and i can say you know what okay whatever i say it's incomplete i would choose that one as my uh, filter to be added to this particular one and that's how now you can create it and if i want to make sure that when I run this report, it's there, then I can say prompt for value. Now, under the settings, there was also the sorts. And this is how you can sort this particular report again, because by default, it, it goes by a generic count or the first one first serve. Now it's indeed by company name, then by company ID, and then by invoice number. And in here, you have a whole bunch of items again that you can select. You can also go to the other category and also can sort on any of these kind of values that you have there. On the settings, also there's the option of the general one. Here you can say, okay, what kind of default export type? So you can say maybe you always want to do this one to Excel. So that's an option that you have. You can include the setup info. We always suggest to say no, because then you have a report that you can make uh, to a client even available. That's why you, a lot of times we even do for the ones that have presentable information for a client, we can do it the right way as a PDF. You can say, okay, what is exported? In this case, maybe RTF and CSV. We don't use it nowadays too much. We use PDF and Excel. Always show the filters in the report viewer. You always want to have that one. If there's no data, then show the message. That's always uh, easy. 
Uh, that's a quicker way than showing the report. Maybe it needs to generate the report and then there's no information, but maybe sometimes you want to see the report with say no data. Excel options, you don't want to have suppressed formatting. You do want to have the formatting as best as possible in there. And you have over here the page size and the page orientation and fit the page width. Again, a lot of similarities to what you know from Excel. They kind of copied the same setup and that's in here. Now, what's also a good one too, is that of course here on the, this, you have the sections. Uh, you can right click on it. That's where you can add a section, either way a report header, a group header. You can delete the section. You can even do a section shading. So lots of, lots of options. Whenever you run the report, that's basically this a little button here. It says save and run report. So uh, don't worry that when you run the report, you forgot to save it. This one automatically saves and run the report. What you can do too, is that you can schedule these reports. That's here on the little clock menu. And that's where you can say, okay, I want to have a uh, setting that wants to be run. Now, in this case, there's nothing here. But again, if we go to the report that we have over here and we click on our little hamburger menu, then over here, we have the schedule report. Again, gives you a whole bunch of settings on, on what you want to do. You want to have the scheduled name. You want to have it execute immediately or on a specific time. If there's a recurring pattern, daily, weekly, monthly, when does it need to start? Schedule it on. Password, uh, I would not uh, do it, but maybe you have a confidential report that needs to go to a particular person, then indeed you can put a, a password on it. I need to fill in some items over here. Okay. See what it allows us to go to the next one. Yeah, of course, it doesn't want to have a time. And as you can see, if you forget something, uh, Autodesk will remember, remember you when it needs to be started or what needs to be filled out. And now we have enough information filled out. So here's the filters. So although you have a default report with your regular filters, if you want to schedule a report, you can still add some additional filters. And that way you can make a real modified report based on a kind of a canned report that you have. And then also you have the option to go to two, to which it needs to go. And you can change the subject of the title and you can change the headers as well. Another thing that I want to mention to you too, before uh, we go into something else, is that to be able to uh, access these levels on your security level, you need to have the ability for the live reports under the report section, that you can access the live reports designer, that you can manage live reports folders, that you can publish live reports and that you can schedule live reports. If one of these ones are turned off, then you don't have all the features. Right now I'm, I'm using this particular user. And that's why I have all those features uh, on. On live reports folders, there's also customized reports. And right now that's why it says there's already a folder, but it says no access. In this case, you would need to right click on here. Uh, or you need to select it. And then you can grant access to it clicking over here to the left click and now you can basically click the, the change and here you can select okay what kind of access does this particular person have let's say we say run edit delete reports we say save and as you can see over here too also the folder that i already created new reports is also right now over here but right now also there's no permission so we need to click on this one too and of course give the full permission there as well here is where you can provide people restrictions yes or no that's a little bit. Then there's also the way, and now with these kind of things, you can run edits and you can publish those reports. You need to make sure that you have the settings enabled. I think that's uh, that's about it. A high level overview of what you can do with the live reports. It can be pretty overwhelming. If you know Excel, then you can get your way around it. There's lots of formulas. There's a lot of help also in, uh, in Autodesk. If there's uh, some questions, then of course Autodesk can help you too. But it's kind of an advanced section. If you need a special report, then Autodesk will come up with, uh, with special designs that they will charge you for. We can also help you a little bit more. There's a couple of tips that we can maybe give you more if you run into some issues. But again, let us know. Go to our Facebook group, uh, post a comment, and we'll help you from there. Thank you.